Hey guys and welcome back to Chess24. This is Jan Gustafsson and I keep talking about the Qatar Masters. Qatar Masters is an exciting open tournament that played its final round today. So far we've basically been focused on Vladimir Kramnik and Anish Giri. Anish Giri started with 6 out of 6. Vladimir Kramnik started with 2 draws and then won 6 in a row. So he was in the lead before the final round with 7 out of 8, while Anish Giri, after his 6 out of 6 start, lost 2 games in a row and with 6 out of 8 fell behind. But quietly, at least in this program frankly, a new force has emerged in the tournament. We see him here on the picture, the Chinese Olympia winner Yu Yang Yi. 20 years old, not a bad player. Rating, live rating I believe around 2735, somewhere in that neighborhood. He's on 6.5 out of 8, only half a point behind Vladimir Kramnik. And they faced each other for a tournament victory in the final round. Yu Yang Yi with the white pieces, as we can see on the picture. Small spoiler there, he played 1 e4 against the ever solid X World Champion Vladimir Kramnik. Let's go straight to the game and have a look. I hope this brings us to the game. Yeah, here we are. 1 e4. Kramnik. Only needs a draw to win the tournament, so he plays his most solid repertoire, which of course is the move e5, knight c6, and the Berlin variation, which is not named after him, but maybe it should be, because he's the one who really brought it into the limelight by using it to become world champion, defeating Garry Kasparov in the year 2000. Kasparov wasn't able to win a single game against this Berlin defense. Yu Yang Yi choose the move d3, which if you have to win against Kramnik, probably is the move you want to play. We've seen a lot of this castles, knight takes e4, d4, knight d6 endgame. As recently as in the Magnus Carlsen Vishiana match, we've seen quite some examples of this line. But in general, Kramnik is supposed to be the leading expert in the world of this line. And it's going to be hard to beat him there. So Yu Yang Yi chooses d3. Not necessarily gives him an opening advantage, but keeps more pieces on the board. Bishop c5 is the main move. And here bishop takes c6. There's a bit of a philosophical discussion here. Nothing is supposed to give white an edge. And camps are torn between those who like to play c3 or even the move castles and keep their bishop and then try to play this structure very slowly. And those who like to give up this bishop immediately and inflict black with double pawns here after d takes c6. Then play a slow game, hoping that, first of all, the double pawns and the slight weakness of the e5 pawn, and above all, the super solid white structure will provide a bit of an advantage. It's a matter of taste. Nothing is supposed to be really better for white. Me personally, I've always been afraid of this structure we see on the board with the black pieces, because white is so solid and it's easier to play. I've had a traumatic experience losing this against Luke McShane in around 500 moves. No, it was 120 moves, but it felt like 500. So it's not a structure I fancy with black, but all these super strong players, Anand, Carlsen, Kramnik, they seem to have a PhD in the structure, have played it a ton with both colors. Kramnik not really with both colors, Kramnik mainly with black, all the other guys with both colors. And I think the consensus is that black is fine here. Should be 6 is a nice move. One of the problems that black has to solve is the positioning of this knight. It's not doing so well on f6. And typical routes are knight d7, knight f8, and then either to g6 or to e6. Or another typical tour is knight to d7, knight to b8, believe it or not, and after bishop d6 and c5 to put this knight on c6. Black can only get away with this because the nature of the play is quite slow. And bishop e6 is nice in a sense that it makes way for the knight on d7 and developing the bishop first. U castles, which is natural, and knight to d7. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention knight bd2 is one of thousands of moves that have been tried here. The other thousand are castles, h3, bishop e3, b3. I think that's about it. Maybe it's not a thousand. Anyway, knight bd2 is one of many playable moves. Not more or less critical than the others. So bishop e6, castles, and knight to d7. 
not only stopping knight g5, but once again preparing to set up this construction with f6 if needed and preparing all these knight tours I pointed out. Yu Yang Yi now chooses a very concrete line, which I like. Knight to b3 looks like a funny square for this knight, but it has a concrete idea. It starts by attacking this bishop, bishop goes away, bishop to b6. And now we see that knight to b3 cleared this diagonal for the other bishop, for his own bishop, allowing knight to g5. And knight g5 forces black to part with his bishop pair. We can see this bishop has nowhere to go where it cannot be captured, and else knight takes e6 is in the air. So Kramnik decides to go bishop takes b3, which is a concession, but in return he wins quite some time. Should be said that Kramnik was still blitzing this famously well prepared. Oh, I should centralize a little bit. <clears throat> famously well prepared, and he still knew this inside out, it looked like. f6, kicking the knight back, knight to e6, doesn't really do anything, in fact. Knight is a little loose on e6, and after queen g4, it could very well get into trouble. Let's say g6, and king f7 is coming. Poor knight on e6. Looks nice, but it's all alone. So you have to go back, knight f3, and Kramnik keeps blitzing, plays the move knight to f8. Once again, the knight planning to conclude his tour. So in return for the two bishops, black has gained quite some time to put his piece on nice squares. Still, white does have the nicer structure. White's double pawn is a lot more useful than black's double pawn. Opens this half open file for his rook, controls a lot more squares. In general, a takes b3, capturing towards the center with the a pawn is a lot more desirable than going d takes c6, putting a central pawn on the c file. So white has that going for him. Let's see if it yields him anything. Knight d2, intending to put the knight on c4. Knight e6 is logical. And queen h5 check was a bit of a surprise for me, but might show good understanding. He spends two moves on provoking g6 just to loosen up the black pawn chain a little bit and creating a weakness on f6, which may be in the distant future, very distant after white plays. A bunch of moves like this, f6 could be a little weak, could be the bishop finds a home on h6. I was surprised you spent two tempi on this, but it certainly is a very interesting idea and shows how slow play is in positions of this nature. So queen to d1, bishop to c5, not quite sure about this move, I gotta tell you. To my mind it looks more logical to maybe just castle really. Leave this bishop here, knight to c4, play a move like queen e7. Arguably white is slightly, slightly better. But I'm not sure this bishop c5 is a great idea. However, I'm not the one who has a PhD in Berlin structures, so I really struggle explaining the little subtleties here. The idea of bishop c5 we see on the next move, knight to c4, Kramnik goes b5. I'm just not sure if I like it once again, because it does weaken this pawn construction further, it creates some new weaknesses on c5 and a5. On the plus side, it chases away the white knight immediately. That's very small nuances here, and to understand when these things are good and when they're bad, it's very, very hard to figure out. Me, once again, I would have preferred to just castle here. Maybe he was afraid of a move like knight a5, but rook b8, I think, still keeps his construction solid. So knight c4, Kremlin went b5, knight to a5, of course, jumping into this newfound home. Queen to d7, and bishop to e3. Really simple play by Yu Yangi, not doing anything too fancy. But based on his slightly better structure, white can do a lot of things. Another interesting decision here, but this one I think is correct. Kramnik goes bishop b6, bishop takes e3, f takes e3. Once again, I think white is a bit better. You can follow up with b4, knight to b3, and exert some pressure. Bishop to b6, and b4, clamping down on the c5 square. Kramnik finally castles, queen to d2. It's time to take stock. White is slightly better. There's only one pair of minor pieces left each, but white does have the better pawn structure. And he threatens to bring this knight back into play with knight b3, using the c5 weakness. In some lines he can co consider a move like c4, threatening c5, and trying to open the c-file. 
So statically, what is better? Therefore, black has to do something active. And Kramnik, I believe, here overreacts a little bit and does something a bit too active. The move maybe, he maybe should have played is a move c5, I believe. Getting rid of the double pawns, still leading to slightly inferior position after something like this. I takes, let's say, queen e3, knight e6. But one that should be tenable for black. Knight b3. It's a bit unpleasant. Once again, weakness is caused by this move b5. But I don't think it is the end of the world. Kramnik decided to play more actively, play the move f5. Very logical, it creates counterplay on the king side potentially. And I believe it is a sound decision strategically, but it might be flawed tactically, which is what we'll see in the game now. Yu Yang Yi, the 20 year old Chinese, after e takes f, g takes f, he starts very concrete operations with the move queen to c3, which is a strong move, but it did require quite a bit of calculation. It takes the pawns on e5 and c6. It turns out that black has no easy way out. If he plays the first move that comes to mind, at least to my mind, bishop takes a5, rook takes a5, this weakness is still very much there. And if black now were to go f4, white can just take on a7 it looks like, and there is nothing concrete there. All these lines, they can look dangerous for white from a distance, because black can get in moves like f3. But it turns out, here after f3, queen takes e5, for example, that tactically it all holds together for the white player. And Yu Yang Yi is an extremely gifted tactician, which means he can't be bluffed by something that looks like an attack, but might not be. So I'm not quite sure what went wrong for Kramnik. I wouldn't be surprised if it was something in these line I just mentioned with bishop a5. Said he went for f4 directly, which gives up a pawn, but once again creates some play on the king side. Bishop takes b6, c takes b, knight takes c6, pawn is a pawn, and what is important, this pin cannot be exploited with a move like rook fc8, because the knight unpins itself with knight takes e5. We can continue this line even further, because here it might look like after queen to d6, the black player is still winning material because the queen is under attack and this knight is hanging, but it is an illusion. Queen b3 is very strong, queen takes e5, rook e1, white wins his knight back and is winning. So this doesn't work. Full disclosure, probably even queen e1 worked, but it is a bit passive. Stead Kramnik tried queen d6, but losing another move is another indicator that something has gone slightly wrong. And Yu Yang Yi, I've been very impressed with this play here. The moves aren't difficult, but judging that it all holds together, I believe that is difficult. He just plays the move rook takes a7. Cold-bloodedly, keeps collecting pawns. Ain't worry about nothing. Very impressive stuff. And once again, the pin doesn't work because rook c8 now runs into knight e7 with a little knight fork. Instead, Kramnik tried... What did he try? <clears throat> rook takes a7, knight takes a7, and f3, launching an attack. However, queen to c6 was another very strong move. And that's an advantage the defender has often in such situations. He can operate with exchange threats, meaning black can never go into an ending because the endings are lost because he sacrificed two pawns. So Kramnik has to keep the queens on the board, but now white activated his own queen and controls this diagonal, which comes in very handy. Queen e7, he just takes another pawn, knight takes b5, that's three pawns, please checkmate me, Mr. X World Champion, else there'll be a couple pawns up. It turns out there is no mate, Kramnik plays king h8 trying to bring reserves into the game, but just a very cool g3, correctly judging. You're not going to get your queen to h3 in time. So if king h8, maybe f takes g2 was more resilient, but there is still no mate. Even king takes g2 is possible. Knight f4 check, just king h1. And now it could be even be white who becomes more active, plus white still is a couple of pawns up. So you try king h8, g3, Queen f7 is logical enough, planning to make his way through to h3, but doesn't work. Yu Yang Yi is just calculating everything. He plays rook to a1, activating his last passive piece, 
and there is no progress to be made for black. If black were to play queen f5 intending this, rook a8 is coming and he's not in time once again. Queen to h3, queen takes f3 is a very important cute little tactic. Exploiting this pin and stopping mate at the same time. So if you can't do that, there is not much hope left. After rook takes a8, queen takes a8, king g7. Once again, white comes first. Move like knight d6 and queen h3 is no longer possible because this pawn is hanging. So a matter of very accurate calculation because especially in this line rook a1, queen f5, rook a8, he had to spot this key trick with queen takes f3. Okay, he didn't actually. He could have taken here and then gone queen takes f3, but he did, certainly did have to make sure that he did not get mated. And after knight g5, once again, <clears throat> black is not in time. This is the move Kramnik played, but he does not have the luxury to spend another move on defending this pawn. Rook a8, and now black can only dream of getting his queen here. Queen e7 was played, but there's already desperation. h4, chasing this knight away, and also probably stopping e4. Knight h3, king f1, not afraid of ghosts. And white is, I don't know, three pawns up and is going to keep collecting. So the game is basically over here. e4 was tried by Kramnik, but just queen takes e4. There's multiple other wins here. Queen takes e4 is certainly good enough. The point is... After queen takes e4, the intermediate check, rook takes f8, king to g7, d takes e4. This ending is not very interesting because white is like five pawns up and this knight is trapped. So after queen takes e4, if black went rook takes a8, well, queen takes a8 is good, but white can also just go queen takes e7, rook a1, queen e1, stopping the checkmate. Once again, have a totally winning ending. So Yu Yang Yi, not only did he defeat Vladimir Kramnik, he also defeated Anish Giri the round before that. And what he did also do is win the tournament. Congratulations to Yu Yang Yi. He took out the two guys who dominated this tournament, beat them both and very deservedly won it himself with seven and a half out of nine. Let's go have a brief look at, not this picture again, Another picture of Yu Yang Yi over here. He's only 20 years old, but he certainly is making some noise in the chess world. Well, I want to have a look at, at uh, the final standings. Here we see, it's a bit small, but I'm guessing we can see Yu Yang Yi, 7.5 out of 9. Vladimir Kramnik in second place with 7 out of 9. Anish Giri, who played a great game, won his last round game, is on 7 out of 9. And so the two big storylines came in second and third and Yu Yang Yi, whom I haven't covered enough clearly during the Qatar Masters, won the tournament. Bit of an upset and what a success for the Chinese player. Congratulations. Thank you guys for watching the video and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.